I know this game was released around the time the Trash Can Mac Pro was released, but still seeing it running this well on this machine years later is pretty impressive. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some gaming and emulation on this 2013 Trash Can Mac Pro. These were released by Apple between 2013 and 2018 and it was kind of a big failure. High-end configurations could go for around $3,000, and yeah, I mean, that's still expensive even in 2023 for a PC like this, but uh, this one here was actually given to me by one of my buddies. I didn't think it was going to work. I didn't mention anything about it. I just said, yeah, go ahead, send it over. I'll see what I can do with it. Booted it up, and to my surprise, it actually had Windows 10 installed with Boot Camp and a smaller partition on the SSD with Mac OS to get that up and running. So while we're doing all of our gaming and emulation in this video, we're going to be using Windows 10. But if there's an interest, we can check out Mac OS. And there are a couple other operating systems that we can boot from USB on this device. Like one of my favorite standalone emulation operating systems, Bato Serra. You can actually get this up and running from USB on these x86 based Mac devices. Like I mentioned, when these were initially released, a rig like this went for about $3,000. Right now, for a very similarly configured Mac Pro trash can version, you can pick it up for $3.99. The one listed here has double the RAM of the one we're going to be taking a look at. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't go out and buy one of these unless you have a specific use case scenario where you need one of these trash can Mac Pros. And off the top of my head, I can't think of a scenario that would require this specific PC, but you know, with all of the advancements in CPU and GPU technology, this is definitely coming in on the lower side of performance given that it's 2023 and these were released in 2013 to 2018. So when it comes to the specs of the one we're going to be testing out in this video, for the CPU we've got the Intel Xeon E5 1650V2. 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.5GHz and a turbo up to 39 I do have the option to upgrade this to a 12 core 24 thread CPU and I might do it given the price on those, they're around $40 to $50 used on eBay right now. But for the GPU we've actually got a dual Fire Pro setup here, two D500 GPUs, clocked at 800 megahertz with three gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM each. These are workstation GPUs and when they were initially released these were pretty powerful but uh, unfortunately in 2023 we don't have Vulkan support with these. Basically we can go up to DirectX 11 so some of the emulators and games that required Vulkan just aren't going to work on these GPUs right now. This also has 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD. We're going to be running Windows 10 but like I mentioned if the interest is there I I can do another video testing out Mac OS with gaming and emulation on this device, but I think we're going to get the best performance out of Windows. Alright, so here we are. Got Windows 10 running. Unfortunately, we can't get Windows 11 on this machine. We've got that 6 core, 12 thread Xeon CPU, and like I mentioned, there is a 12 core upgrade, so we could get 12 cores and 24 threads. And you know, if it's a major upgrade, helps out with performance, I might make another video. 32 gigabytes of RAM, and we've got the dual AMD Fire Pro D500 GPUs. Actually pretty awesome, but they're old GPUs. They don't support Vulkan. They each have three gigabytes of VRAM. Now I will tell you that using this as an everyday desktop is actually pretty snappy. I mean, you want to do some web browsing, some document editing, some email checking, some video playback from YouTube. And of course, it'll still handle video editing, it'll still handle photo editing, but it's just not going to be as fast as newer CPUs and GPUs on the market right now. The very first thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks that I ran. I tried several different benchmarks and most of them just crashed out on me. Tried them several times and just kind of gave up, but these were the ones I was able to get through. Geekbench 5, single core, 791, multi core, 4443. Multi's not looking bad given the age of this chip, but we do have 6 cores and 12 threads. The last one I was able to get through was 3D Mark Time Spy, and we get a total score of 1,387. Definitely looking very low, and keep in mind, we can enable Crossfire, but that was giving me more issues than I wanted to deal with right now, so we're actually just running these on one of the D500 GPUs. So obviously, these synthetic benchmarks aren't phenomenal, but I still want to get into some real-world gaming to see how this thing performs. And first up, we've got Injustice 2 at 1080p low. To my surprise, we're getting 60 FPS out of it. I could probably take some of these settings up to medium. 
kind of impressed here. You know, with the first couple games that I tested, uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I figured we'd be at 30 or maybe even under 30 with a game like this at 1080p, given the age of the CPU and GPUs. But yeah, as you can see, it does run it at full speed. GTA 5 was about the best performing game that I tested, and one thing to keep in mind is this game was released in 2013, so was the Mac Pro. When this game was released, these were actually some high-end GPUs. 1080p normal settings, we get an average of around 87 FPS with this one. Here's The Witcher 3, 720p, low, and with this I also tried Crossfire. Uh, it seemed to give me a little better frame rate, but I had more dips than I did just using a single D500. Now going into this, I figured we'd get much better performance out of it, given you know the age of the game and how well optimized it's been over the years, but unfortunately we're only getting that average of around 48 at 720p low with The Witcher 3. Next on the list, we've got Street Fighter V 900p medium settings. Originally, going into this game, I went straight to 1080p high settings to see what it would do. We only averaged about 45 FPS, and even at medium settings 1080p, it did dip under 60, so I had to drop it down to 900p. There was one more newer game that I wanted to test before we move over to some emulation, and that was God of War. We're at 720p low, and I do have resolution scale set to 60%, so we're well under 720p, and we can average around 38 FPS with this game. I knew we weren't going to get great performance with this, and I wanted to test more newer AAA games, but a lot of the stuff just wouldn't start up due to the graphics drivers we have here with the D500. Moving over to some emulation, we've got PSP using PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 5X resolution, DirectX 11 back in. This ran at a constant 60, and we're upscaled over 1080p with it. So seeing the kind of performance we're getting here with PSP and Chains of Olympus, then we're not going to have an issue with any of these PSP games. As long as the game's compatible with the emulator, it's going to run it at full speed, and we can upscale the easier to emulate stuff even higher than this. Taking it up a notch to PS2 using PCSX2, 1080p, DirectX 11 back in, and a lot of the stuff that I tested ran at full speed 1080p, but when it came to God of War 2, I had to drop it down to 720p. If we had access to Vulkan on these GPUs, we'd be able to do a lot more emulation. Unfortunately, when it comes to like PS3 and Wii U, at least in Windows, Vulkan is definitely the preferred backend to use, but with both of those emulators, we only have access to either OpenGL or Vulkan, so we have to stick with OpenGL and we're not going to get great performance with those higher end emulators. But luckily, the Dolphin emulator does allow us to use the DirectX 11 backend, and I was seeing awesome performance here. 1080p here with Tatsunoko versus Capcom, and I went through and tested a couple GameCube games, something like Rogue Squadron 2 will run at 720p full speed on this machine. So yeah, we can get some gaming and emulation out of the way on this device, but I wouldn't run out and buy one. Now there is some more testing that I want to do, and with all of the PC games you saw running in this video, we were using only one of those D500 GPUs. And I know a lot of older games would run much better with Crossfire X enabled, as long as the game supported it. But uh, yeah, the next thing I want to do here is actually test out Botocera for emulation. I've always had much better luck with these AMD GPUs and OpenGL and Linux, so there might be a chance we could get some Wii U booted up on this and and play it through that operating system, or even the newer release of SimU for Mac OS itself. And yeah, this is exactly what I was running into with a lot of newer games. It would just crash immediately. Sometimes it would come up right to the loading screen and then shut right down. There was really nothing I could do about it. And I've looked around for, you know, hack drivers for this thing. Unfortunately, it's just so old, nobody's really messing around with the D500s anymore. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know. I've got it sitting here. I didn't put any money into it so far, but we can still upgrade that CPU. And with what we've tested so far, it's really the GPU holding us back. But adding six more cores and 12 more threads isn't going to hurt anything. I mean, it's only going to up that CPU performance. So that might be something I want to do down the road. And, you know, if the performance increase is good enough, I'll come back to it and make another quick video. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. 
And like always, thanks for watching.